Destroyers have jobs in peacetime, too. One of them's helping to keep the peace through scientific research. In this case, studying how sound travels into the sea from the Indian Ocean on the east coast of Africa to the Caribbean, southeast of the United States. And that's where we were, aboard a Coast Guard buoy tender 8,000 miles from the Navy destroyer. We included Lieutenant Pete Gregory and Jim Parsons, my diving buddy. Pete was the project officer. My department was troubleshooting. I'm Mike Nelson. As I joined Pete at the control board, I could see that my department was in line for a job right away on the eve of our very first experiment. Something brand new was wrong. Microphone, Mike. It's not picking up a thing. You sure? Go out yourself. Maybe you've got the touch. That's our thing, then. We better haul him up and have a look. Yeah, but not all the way up, though, huh? Fix him underwater? Great. Save a lot of time if you can. I'll go with you, Mike. Okay. All right, take it up easy. Scientists had just announced a startling theory that sound waves travel through a kind of natural speaking tube at the bottom of the sea at an average speed of 840 miles a minute. Supposedly, we had planted our hydrophones at the right level for tapping this underwater RFD, three-fourths of a mile down. How come then that the end of the cable was coming into sight so soon? cut somehow, about a hundred feet down. Rocks had been tied on to compensate for the weight of the hydrophones and the rest of the cable. How and why? Where come from? No man's land or whatever you call it? Ouija? Yeah. It's an orphan. Nobody's ever claimed it. Wait a minute. There's a new military junta in Castania. Yeah, what about it? Well, they've been making noises about redrawing their boundaries to take in a bunch of these little sand springs. Ouija too, maybe. What do you say we pay Ouija a little visit, huh? All right. Land is right, huh? There sure it is. Welcome to Castania. 
Captain Navarre of the Republican Navy and acting governor of Weechi Island. Lieutenant Gregory, United States Coast Guard. This is Mike Nelson, Commodore and our auxiliary. An honor. But next time I beg you, please request permission to come ashore. Permission, he says. You're on Castinian soil, Lieutenant. And your ship is in Castanian waters. Undeniably, you have been committing espionage. If you persist... What do you mean, undeniably? I deny it. Yes? Come with me. You won't need that. Dr. Cole. Yes. What is it, Captain? I'm busy. This won't take long. Dr. Raku, Dr. Tomaso Raku. Yes. I've been admiring your work in oceanography for a long time. Thank you. Especially your studies on the counter Gulf Stream. <laughs> You're a scientist yourself, then? Well, we are on a scientific mission, yes. You are spying. We have proof. Show them, Doctor. We're doing a research job, Captain. Now, your government was notified. Everyone in the area was. Yeah. Our hydrophone. Splendid equipment. Remarkably sensitive. Incredible clarity. Perfect for spying in our territorial waters. That's why we confiscated it. Confiscated? These waters aren't territorial. We're taking huh? You are busy, Doctor. Go then. And I suggest you return to your ship and leave this area immediately. My orders are to stay here till these tests are completed. And mine are to maintain Castania's rights. By any action required. I trust you won't find action necessary, Captain. We might be forced to retaliate. Say, Mike, all set? Yeah. Let's hope they don't uh, confiscate this set. Yeah. How do you figure, Pete? I mean, Dr. Raku working for them. His country, right or wrong? Yeah, I guess that is it. Well, what operation say? Go ahead. They said, quote, orders unchanged, end quote. Meaning, what are we waiting for? Wonder what their orders were. Catchers in sight, Lieutenant. Lower away. Okay, Mike. Lower away. I'm going to follow it down away. Not too far, huh? This camera loses you at 150 feet. Oh, don't worry. That's my maximum without special tanks. They'll probably move in around 90 feet if they try it all. I can get there fastest from below. Okay, Mike, you're the diver. Just watch it, huh? Uh, there's nothing to watch yet. Maybe there won't be. Out.
leveling off at 150. Roger. Hydrophone's on the bottom now and operational. I'm radioing the destroyers to drop the cans. Out. Charles, this is George. Over. Charles, this is George. Over. George, this is Charles. Over. Manila Bay. Over. Manila Bay. Zero hour. 1425. Now, 1424. Minus 10. Minus 5. It wasn't a secret mission. The code could be broken down in no time. George meant Admiral George Dewey. Charles meant the officer to whom he gave a famous order at Manila Bay. You may fire when you are ready, Gridley. Our Gridley was firing depth charges. Time to explode 4,000 feet down, inside the speaking tube from the Indian Ocean to the Caribbean. If the sound waves went the whole distance, 8,000 miles, at their theoretical average speed of 840 miles a minute, they'd hit the hydrophones and Pete's monitor in an hour and a half. We'd never know unless the hydrophones remained tied to the monitor by cable. They'd cut it once, burned it. I could see now how. They weren't getting a second chance. Exploded deep in the Indian Ocean. And the sound waves headed west. Their target was 8,000 miles away, a set of hydrophones on the bottom of the Caribbean. The phones were rigged to a topside monitor. My job was protecting the cable from some local fire eaters. They claimed that we were running a spy setup. Way off to, Mike. What's wrong? Frogman at 2 o'clock with something that looks like a flamethrower. Where? I can't see him. They haven't come into camera range yet. It was an underwater cutting torch, special design. Only one man on their team could have dreamed it up, the world-famous marine scientist, my hero, Dr. Rico. time to check gauges, but we had to be 200 feet down now at least. Speed swimming only increased my chances of being hit by nitrogen narcosis. And that's as dangerous to a diver as laughing gas to a driver on the freeway. Safer though than being hit by a blowtorch. Two hundred and twenty-seven feet. Deeper meant death. The narcosis had hit them first. They were still dangerous, but only to each other. I couldn't let them die, either by burning or drowning. their weight belts. That would take them to the top at a safe speed, too. They wouldn't need any stops for decompression. They hadn't been down deep more than a few minutes. I had been in the danger zone, though, 150 feet or deeper for a quarter of an hour. 
I would have to decompress. It'd take about 30 minutes. Nothing to it, really. Except uh, I didn't have that much air. Only 100 feet from the top now, but 100 yards from the ship, out of camera and radio range. By the time I got to my first stop, 30 feet down, I'd also be out of air. Rockman, must be the ones Mike spotted. Mike, this is Pete Gregory. Mike, this is Pete Gregory. Come in, Mike. Mike, this is Pete Gregory. Come in, Mike. I had to find my way back to the cable and SOS Pete to send out a tank right away fast. Semper Paratus, the Coast Guard motto, always prepared. I believed it now. Should have checked in by now. Phones are working okay. What time do cans go in? 14.25. For 96 minutes now. Yeah. So I'm speaking to. Well, when it gets to 100 minutes, I'm going to call it a... <laughs> three cans, three booms. Wow. Nice speaking to. <laughs> hey, you know, I got a half a mind to buzz over and tell Navarre and Riku. Yeah, they probably know already. They've got another set of phone. Yeah. Perhaps there won't be any more tests. Tests? I tell you, they're spying. And unless we stop them, they... How? What can we do? The hydrophone can identify what things they put in the water, can it? Well, yes, within limits. But that doesn't mean I can do anything. If you love your country, Dr. Riku, you will find a way to serve her. The next test in our series was to see if sound waves starting 8,000 miles away could set off acoustic mines. We were planting them below the ship, but way, way down, three quarters of a mile alongside the hydrophones. Actually, though, the explosive effect of the mines was nil, farther away than 100 yards. Secure below. Let's hope it stays that way till firing time. There's no problem. Oh no. What if Riku comes up with another torch? They're pulling out. Bag and baggage. Good, huh? Yeah. Still like to know what Riku's angle is. The code word for test number two was Bunker Hill. Sam Adams gave the order to John Hancock. 
John saw the whites of their eyes at 0916 and fired three depth charges. Uh, nothing to do now but wait 96 minutes for the sound waves to ping against the mines. That would be at or very near 1052. Dr. Raccoon! 